this is a big fucking deal, okay? This is not like, oh, you know, this is like 2020 type stuff, you know? Like where a lot of us said shit was going to pop off in 2020 like we've never seen before. And boom, that happened. Next few months are going to be a big deal. There will be shifts in power, our government, our structures, all of that employment. So just be prepared for that. All right, let's fucking do this. This video is no fucking joke, so prepare, okay? I know I don't wanna ask you of too much, but you wanna, you may wanna take some notes unless you wanna come back and watch this video again a few more times, okay? Because we are going over a lot. I got pages and pages of notes here, so don't think I'm playing. Did not come to play in the month of November, okay? November is a month, okay? <laughs> November is a fucking month. November is a month that is not coming to play. It's like a curveball, okay? It is like a curveball. Everything this year has been building to these last couple months of 2021, and they are also introducing what's coming in 2022. By the way, I'm having a bad hair day, okay? It's dirty AF and I didn't feel like watching it because I'm lazy. It's a mess, so we're just gonna deal with her. So this video is basically what you need to know about November worldly predictions and personal predictions based on whoever the hell you are. It is not based on zodiac sign. I have other videos coming for that, so make sure that you're subscribed and that your notifications are on so you get upload or what? <laughs> so you get notified when those videos are up. Also, quick announcement, I may be doing the November videos, the Zodiac sign readings separately. I know I've been doing them all in one video and I know we finally just got consistent with that, but I am feeling a little bit theatrical for November, so I may be doing them in separate videos. Keep on the lookout. I may, I may not. You'll know when you see me upload. So if I could describe November in a nutshell, which is very, very hard because there's so many different things going on in November, but it is very confronting. It is about facing a lot of challenges, upheavals, facing a lot of fears, a lot of limitations, a lot of restrictions, power struggles, abuse of power being exposed. Basically fucking crazy, okay? It's fucking crazy. I also am going to make some predictions about Biden in this video for the US because he's got some big shit coming in his chart, which I talked about over on TikTok like a month ago. And I posted that on my Instagram as well. So I've been keeping an eye out for this month for him. And then Kamala has some interesting stuff coming up too in the next few months. So I do wanna talk about that because it looks pretty fucking crazy, okay? So, so basically we have a fixed sign shit show, right? And this is because as I've mentioned Previously, in so many other videos, we have this Saturn Uranus square that really came into play this year. These two big dogs have been basically the underlying background or the backdrop happening behind everything else that's been going on this year in 2021. Saturn and Aquarius, square Uranus and Taurus. It brings a lot of upheaval and frustration, rebellion, revolutionary themes are in the air, okay? It's like a lot of non-conforming and also going against the system, but at the same time on the opposite side, conforming and going with the crowd and following the crowd. It's exposing a lot about the establishments and the systems that run our world and the societal systems in technology, science, experimentation, etc. It is really kind of this push-pull, which we really see in the in the world. That is the big underlying theme of 2021. Now, the reason why November is so big and one of the crucial times of this year and this it's like all this coming up to this boiling point is because Mars is getting involved again, okay? And Mars has been kind of aspecting this thing on and off. Mars is now getting involved again for the final time of this cycle before it comes into its conjunction with Saturn early next year. What this means is there is going to be a lot of tension as this is going to be activating this T-square between Mars, Uranus, and Saturn, which is gonna look like a kind of uneven triangle. This is going to trigger this fixed square 
wear even more, okay? So these next couple months are going to be intense, and this is not even the only reason why, guys. There's so, so much other shit going on that I will probably be doing separate videos on, so stay tuned for that, but there is like revolutionary shit going on, really rare alignments that have not happened for a very, very long time, such as the Pluto return, Venus retrograde on the Pluto return, then Mercury coming back and retrograding on the Pluto return. It's like insane. There's a lot that's about to start happening that's gonna kick off next year, and it's gonna be crazy. Old foundations, old structures are gonna be falling apart but I'm getting ahead of myself, so we will talk about that in another video. So November. So in November, we are in Scorpio season up until towards the end of November when we move into Sagittarius season. What is Scorpio season? And I uploaded like a clip before this video that you can go check out where I really kind of went in depth with Scorpio season. It's only like a six minute clip. Some clips I took from my astro course on our class on Scorpio and what Scorpio means and why. But basically Scorpio is ruled by Mars. It is a fixed water sign therefore it is steady and fixed emotion and very intense emotion scorpio is a feminine sign yet it's ruled by a masculine planet and so in my opinion it shows the strength in feminine energy the strength that can come out of feminine energy but it comes in more of a passive behind the door way in a indirect manner rather than right up in your face like maybe aries for instance because aries is also ruled by mars i've heard someone say this before i think it was uh the astrologer austin Kopic. i'm not 100 percent sure though that was an amazing quote however it was said that if aries is a machine gun scorpio is like a sniper rifle <laughs> and i was like that is so like just perfect because it's intense focused energy towards one direction towards one place scorpio deals with a deep intense emotional bandwidth it feels very deeply and scorpio we are we really start seeing what we are emotionally attached to what needs to be shed purged what needs to change what needs to transform Form, alchemy. Emotional alchemy is very, very big in Scorpio. What we try to hide from ourselves becomes very relevant this month and will start floating to the surface. So all kinds of secrets, people's shadows will be very, very noticeable. It will not be easy to hide things from yourself. It will not be easy to just shove things down in your subconscious or suppress things. Although you may want to, it is not going to be easy to do that this month. So this month is a time of embracing these deep, intense feelings, embracing embracing catharsis and transformation because through this we find our power and we can feel that power rushing through our veins intensely when we get to that place of acceptance, surrender, and allowing ourselves to make friends with our darkness and our fears and our emotions rather than shut them off or try to run from them. So basically Scorpio teaches us the power of catharsis and our hidden dark truths, you know, and how we can embrace those and that really the darkness, otherwise known as yin, feminine energy, has a silent but deadly strength and how we can use that and how we all have that inside of us and how to embrace that because it is our power. It is powerful. And when I say that, I'm not seeing a power in a way that can be egotistical. I'm saying a silent but deadly power, something that you don't need to you know, boast about and brag about or dominate other people over. That's not really real power, that's fear. It's just someone that we think has power because it appears that way, but really it is coming from a form of fear. A really big other massive thing about this month is that we are entering into eclipse season. This is the last eclipse season of this year. So that means it's going to bring a lot of endings, releasing, reflecting, the past, you know, the south node is really involved. We're gonna be really seeing and truly learning the lessons of the Sag South Node, which if you remember, I've talked a lot about, but it deals with our dogmas, our belief systems, our faith, where we are putting blind faith in things, but not following through with the facts, reality, proof, where we are dogmatic about our beliefs and our views and don't want to allow other people to have their opinion, which we've seen a lot of in the world. We think we all know what's best and what is and whatever, and we can't allow someone else to have a different opinion than us or to believe in a different political side or to not believe in a political side at all like me <laughs> it's been very 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 crazy with people in their belief systems right i think that this eclipse season in particular is really finally going to release a lot of that and really make sure 
that we understand the Gemini North Node before that shift happens from Gemini and Sag to Taurus and Scorpio. That's what this these next couple of months, I think, are going to bring with this eclipse season coming. So we are really getting rid of old beliefs, worldviews, political views, religious beliefs, travel, education, all these things were getting brought up with the Sag South Node and the toxic patterns that these things can cause, the more toxic side of these things, the things that can hold us back as a society and as humans. Something that we really may be seeing a lot of come up over these next two months. So this month is going to be an attempt, I think, to silence a lot of dark truth and information by external forces. And this is because as soon as we enter the month, Mars is coming into its square with Saturn. Now, Mars is the more powerful one here according to certain ancient techniques, right? Because Scorpio comes before Aquarius. So Mars and Saturn are both in their home sign, so they're both very powerful and they're both getting into a square with each other. This is going to lead to intense focus, test of endurance, disciplined action, will and force versus restriction, delays, setbacks, suppression, or even oppression of one's deepest desires, will, persistent struggles, frustrations, disempowerment or powerlessness, pushing past our limitations and getting to the bottom of our limits, possible self-worth issues, resistance, and we could also possibly see harsh restrictions defining our weaknesses or getting to the bottom of what we feel are our weaknesses, challenge to authority, resentment, jealousy, confronting challenge head on. Sorry, I'm just reading my long AF notes here, so just excuse me. Slow change or catharsis, emotionally acting before you actually think, fear versus humanity, actions driven by fear, feeling stuck, inhumane rules, conditions or boundaries, toxic behaviors and their consequences, vindictive or vengeful attitudes, toxins, psychological consequences of societal trends, extreme examples of resisting rules, consequences of social media, science and social standards, the dark side of today's world, cancel culture themes. I think that this could be really big for uh, someone to get canceled this month or even, I mean, I don't want to be too wishful, but it could also be the reality of cancel culture in some way or something happening from cancel culture. So we will see sexual crimes, abuse, abuse of power, sex as a threat, blackmail, edgy and jagged trends and looks, mysteriousness, forbidden topics, cruel punishment, or a leader going overboard or exposed for something very dark or cruel, cult-like behavior or obsessive behavior. So these are tons of possibilities of what we could see with this Mars square Saturn in their ruling sign. So this is definitely gonna be a massive power struggle as you can see. So we start off the month with that and that doesn't start waning until around the 11th of the month. So we start the few first couple weeks of the month with that Mars square Saturn. Then the first few days of the month, we have the sun opposite Uranus as well. So the sun opposite Uranus brings massive breakthroughs, breaking free, individuality, coming clean, speaking your truth or expressing your truth, owning something deep and dark about yourself, non-conforming, independence, shakeups, radical self-expression, rebellion, awakenings, unexpected liberation, mania, excitement, crazy unexpected news, unpredictability, illumination, inspirations, unexpectedness, possible crisis of a leader, eccentric yet edgy trends, redemption, impatience, restlessness, and rebellion. So so those are the major themes like boom first part of the month and mars will also oppose saturn later in the month on the 17th which is basically like it is on okay so basically the themes of this month are very similar to what we've experienced before there is going to be some kind of intense motivation, but met with some kind of backlash or some kind of restriction, some type, type of limitation, boundary, or heaviness, some kind of no with Saturn there, some kind of consequence. And then on top of that, right, like we deal with that, we move through that energy, and then we meet Uranus. And then it's like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going all out. And then that's like a massive breakthrough. And so this month could seem like that quite a few times 
times as the sun's moving through, then Mars is moving through, then Mercury's moving through, and they will all separately square Saturn and then oppose Uranus. So then on the fourth, we have the new moon in Scorpio. And this is gonna be really about getting to the emotional root roots of a situation, an intense new clarity, because this new moon is gonna be opposite the planet Uranus as well. So a shaky new development could happen around that time, something unexpected or clarity about a situation that you feel powerless in, possibly a massive breakthrough around that time or liberating yourself from something that has felt icky or kept you down in some way. And we're gonna talk a lot more about the new moon in Scorpio in a separate video, so don't you worry, okay? And then on the fifth, we have Venus moving into Capricorn. And this is a big fucking deal, okay? Because like I said before, Venus is going to retrograde in Capricorn on top of Pluto at the very end of this year in December, okay? And this is going to start this Venus retrograde, Pluto return cycle uh, craziness that's coming the very beginning of next year, but starting the end of this year, okay? So that is going to affect the whole world, but especially the US. And I'm going to do a whole separate video on what we can expect, what's to come. But this is a massive breakdown of the systems, economy, supply chain, economical crisis, basically a lot of other crises involved in that or from that. And so we will get to it. Don't worry. What we value is about to be under a massive reconstruction in the world and in the U.S. specifically, because this will be in the U.S.'s second house of values, priorities, money, etc. Our own priorities will be under revision massively. What was once important to us may no longer be important. And so remember that. I wouldn't say you need to freak out about it, you know, mentally prepare yourself. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just being honest because this is a big fucking deal. Okay. This is not like, oh, you know, this is like 2020 type stuff, you know, like where a lot of us said shit was going to pop off in 2020 like we've never seen before. And boom, that happened, right? And this is going to be a really big deal. The next few months are going to be a big deal. There will be shifts in power, shifts in our government, our structures, big businesses, people, jobs, all of that, employment. A lot of things will be shifting in the next couple months. So just be prepared for that, be mentally prepared. I also talked about a lot of this over on a podcast that I guested on just a couple days ago on another spiritual YouTuber and podcaster named Nicole Frolic. I will link the podcast down below. I also posted it on my community page, but I talked a lot about what's coming and how I personally have mentally prepared for it and emotionally prepared for it. So if you would like to get more info on that, go see that podcast. But I'm gonna do a whole separate stuff on this too, so don't worry. But Venus will go into shadow on November 17th this month. And so from November 17th until she retrogrades on December 19th this year, that whole time period that whole like you know month or so of a period you want to really really watch out for because that time frame is going to bring up themes that are going to come back around okay so prepare for that you want to get affairs in order regarding money you know relationships possessions before november 17th because whatever happens like i said will come back around you'll have to redo or you will change your mind in some way i would be very discerning about what you're buying what you are spending your time money and energy on what's of value what do you really need when it comes down to it right that's what's going to be important with venus and capricorn venus and capricorn is not necessarily worried about the bullshit right it needs the necessities it wants to make sure that it can support itself it wants to make sure it has a sturdy foundation to build upon it doesn't care about the more taurian things like venus and taurus with i'm not saying you need to be like a doomsday prepper necessarily here i'm just saying to be a little bit mentally prepared that something is coming i don't know the extent of how crazy or bad it's going to get but something is coming and it's probably looking like it's going to be big okay so that's what I'm going to say about that. But anyways, also on the 5th, we have Mercury moving into Scorpio, which is going to be really digging up messages from the underworld, revealing info, deep conversations, taboo information. We could also see a lot of secrets and more censorship in some way I could see as well with this. So on the 7th, we have Mercury and Mars starting to square Saturn. And this could really bring up honesty or sharp opinions, pointed verbal attacks or talks, debates, threats, 
heated communication, speaking truth, call to action, demands, investigations, or silencing of some kind of dark truth in some way. I could also see possibly like a disruption around this time to the supply chain, more going on with the shipping crisis, uh, global commerce, trade could be affected around that time. Also see that this could be possibly like a threat, hacking, offensive jokes, a demand or announcement that isn't received well, blackmail, suspicion of authority, a security breach are some other things that I could see mid-month. So like around that seventh area, uh, we may even start seeing it maybe a few days before, a few days after, it may not be right on the seventh. So remember that and let me know if you see anything. Okay, so on the 13th, we have Mercury opposite Uranus. <laughs> so, and this is when things get crazy. This is really going to bring up freedom of speech and press, speaking shocking truths, shocking or impulsive announcements, things coming to light, radical wake up calls, hackers, protests, enlightening situations or conversations, change of perspective, possibly jokes that are actually true. Okay, so just some things that we could see around the 13th. Uh, they may not all happen, only some of them may happen, but those are just the possibilities. So then on the 17th, <laughs> uh, we will have Mars oppose Uranus, but just leave like a week or two before just to be prepared. So like maybe around 11.10 to the 17th in the middle of November, you really want to watch out for Mars opposite Uranus, which is going to be intense urges towards freedom, rebellion, liberation, individuality, independence, thrill-seeking, extremes, impulsivity, rushes of energy, sudden breakthroughs. We could also see something going on with electricity around that time, or it could just feel very electric, okay? <laughs> Recklessness, overcoming obstacles, a fight for independence or freedom in some way, massive defiance, craving for thrill, erotic or seductive desires, emancipation, full throttle and hot-blooded passions. <laughs> Sexual liberation and freedom could be a big thing that comes up around that time. Volcanic activity, rebellion against tyranny, liberation through courage and action, impatience, sudden change, attraction to danger, going against limits on self-expression, sudden conflicts and extremists, a lot of non-conformity. <laughs> like people just are not going to want to conform, okay? This is not a month where people are just gonna sit and take it, okay? So if someone tries to come out and pressure down on people, it is not going to fucking go well, okay? That is what I see personally. Also on the 17th, Venus enters shadow. And so this is a time, like I said before, where we need to start preparing and start really paying attention to what comes up before December 19th when Venus is in shadow because it's showing us a preview of what's coming. Now on the 19th, we have the Taurus lunar eclipse, which is a very, very powerful preview of what's about to come when the nodes change into Taurus and Scorpio. So really this whole month is giving us kind of like a fresh preview, a little tidbit of what we can expect next year and the year after. Okay, so when the nodes move, there's gonna be a massive karmic shift. And so we really need to pay attention and I'm gonna do a whole separate video on the lunar eclipse, so don't worry. But it's gonna be a very powerful time that brings up money, finances, economical changes, the start of some kind of new value system, the end of the old, letting go of certain perceptions on beauty and quality and what is of quality, what's important, what matters. Seeing through societal trends, all of that could be coming up around this Taurus lunar eclipse, but we're going to go into a lot more detail in a separate video. So that is basically it for November's astrology. Now I do want to make, I do want to make some predictions really quick that I see here coming with Biden. Okay. And I have a TikTok video on my TikTok and on my Instagram that you can go watch where I actually looked at his chart and pointed out what I was talking about that I see coming this month. Some other things that I think could be coming for him to get a little bit more specific than I did in that TikTok video. I think that he could be either kind of out of public view or out of the public eye in the month of November, or there could be something going on behind the scenes something like kind of going through the back door kind of energy, something shady, sketchy, hidden shit, secrets, self-sabotaging, health possibly, his health could be 
really at the forefront for some reason or could be declining or there could be some kind of health crisis worst case scenario okay because uranus has been on his moon but also opposite his mercury and his 12th so that's why it appears like he's out there like he's just not really present because he's not <laughs> uh uranus is hitting his chart in a way that's making him look unstable and likely is making him feel unstable um and that's just the truth that's reality that's not me you know just being mean because of whatever right like that's just it is what it is instability may be even more revealed a health issue could be announced he may snap or go off the deep end or make some kind of very impulsive announcement decision demand something he may be removed from public view uh he may there may be some kind of big ending in his life he may make an impulsive decision that ends up backfiring that people do not receive well, like it will not be received well. Could also be things that come up from the past uh, for him as well, or things being dug up from the past. Uh, Scorpio is his 12th house, so this is just a time that's not gonna be very good for him, and he's going through four returns this month, you guys. His Mars return, his solar return, his Mercury return, and his lunar return, his moon's in Taurus, and we're having that Taurus lunar eclipse, so he's going through a lot this month, and Uranus is there in Taurus, and all of it's opposing each other, and so this is gonna make for some really major unpredictability. And that even carries on to next month, Month as well in December because he's got his ascendant in Sag and he's got other shit in uh, Gemini and so that's gonna be a whole opposition and he's just it just doesn't I don't know like it may be fine you know returns are not always a bad thing oppositions are not always a bad thing uh, but it's like a lot for him and he already seems like he's kind of losing it the reason that I also don't think that it's a great thing is because he is a day chart therefore his most malefic planet is Mars. And what's happening? We have a bunch of Scorpio shit, which is ruled by Mars. Mars is in Scorpio. It's powerful. And it's his 12th house of endings, self-sabotage, sickness, being removed or separated from the public or from day-to-day -day life, you know, isolation, imprisonment, things like that. Now, I'm not saying he's going to you know, go to prison or something, but I do think he could end up with some kind of health issue, sick at the very least. It just, it looks like there's a lot going on with him. So anyways, then Kamala, so I look at Kamala, um, nothing too crazy going on in her transits for the month of November, at least not like Biden. Um, but I did look at her zodiacal releasing, which is a Hellenistic, ancient Hellenistic technique for timing, where you can see peak timing periods. And she's going through three very big peak timing periods, uh, November, December, and February. <laughs> and they all have to do with her fourth house, her 10th house and her 11th house. So 10th and 11th is being out in the spotlight and alliances and the fourth house is home and family, which if she was, you know, if she ended up becoming president for some reason, then the home and family thing would make sense, right? So her peak periods are around November 20th, which is literally the day after the Taurus lunar eclipse, which looks the craziest for Biden. Not surprised. Her next big peak period is December 20th, right? Which is literally like the winter solstice, right around the winter solstice. And then the next peak period is in February, 2022. I just wrote February, 2022. I didn't put the exact date. So I'll have to go back and look at that. But yeah. so I could see, I could see her being pushed to the forefront or the spotlight, uh, upcoming career and home shifts, uh, relationship and passion shifts. She also has some fifth house shifts going on, alliance changes, responsibility shift, uh, more responsibility. She's got a sixth, ninth house square going on with this month with November and the Mars Saturn stuff. So that tells me her workload may increase politically, basically where she's going in life um, and how that impacts her on a day-to-day -day level. From what I see though in her chart, you guys, this is not going to necessarily, I don't think this is gonna be something that she actually wants. Um, it seems like it's gonna be very hard and a lot for her to do. So it just seems like she's not very, uh, like from what I see in this and the vibe that I get, it's kind of like, oh, here you go, we're passing this on to you. And she's like, fuck, you know, like that's kind of the vibe that I get, but I could be wrong, could be wrong. So. I really see that she's going through some major responsibility shifts upcoming in the next few months. Venus will retrograde on Pluto, which is in her eighth house and I believe makes some aspects to 
uh, some of her planets, um, but this will definitely be a transformation or change of power or some kind of inheritance of something, inheritance of power, but it will be hard and possibly not exactly what she wants. Like I said, major political stuff happening at the same time. So a lot is coming for her and Joe um, these next few months. So definitely let me know if you see anything before I see anything. Um, <laughs> let me know down below and let me know if you see any of these things happening, any of these themes happening this month. It looks like, uh, I personally think honestly, like all in all, we could see him try to or even leaders around trying to implement more restrictions mandates etc but there's going to be a lot of resistance there's going to be a lot getting dug up kind of like there was in october but maybe even more extreme a lot of whistleblowing uh blackmail abuse of power crimes cruelty being dug up possibly possibly a lot of sexual scandals Alrighty, you guys that is it for this november astrology video I hope this was interesting for you guys and let me know if you end up seeing any of this stuff happening. I would really, really love to hear your feedback on it and to let me know if you have any predictions or anything like that that you get from some of these things that are happening. I'd really love to hear what you think. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and have your notifications on so you see my other videos that I post that are going to be very important. And yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos.